Hi, this is Lizzie Allen, and you're listening to the Literati Records Podcast. Welcome, friends, to episode 30 of the Literati Records podcast, or as Eric from The Outfit likes to say, Little Rowdy. I'm your host, Marcus, and I'm very excited to have my guest, Lizzie Allen, on the show today. But before we get into our feature, I want to remind everyone to connect with us via Facebook and or Twitter. You can use the icons on our website or the links in the show notes. We use our website mostly to post our podcast episodes, but we like to communicate more openly with our listener community through social media. You can also drop us a line via email, literati at literatirecords.com. Send us links to cool local bands or suggestions for local Mix Mondays. Whatever it is, we'd love to hear from you. Once again, I want to let everyone know about our $100 monthly cash giveaway. One random person from our email list will be chosen at the end of each month to win $100 cash. Visit www.literatirecords.com to view the full contest details and access the sign-up form. As I mentioned before, our guest today is Lizzie Allen, voice of local band Vitamins and the creative force behind her first solo project, Miss Miniver Rose. With the completion of her Whatever It Is EP, Lizzie continues to establish herself as one of Denver's most distinct and identifiable voices. And it is my pleasure to present Lizzie Allen, a.k.a. Miss Miniver Rose. Hey, welcome to the show. This is Marcus, and I'm down here at Lost Lake with Lizzie Allen. We're going to discuss her new EP entitled Whatever It Is. Congratulations on a fantastic EP. Thank you. Um, 
most people who are familiar with your work know you as a member of the local band Vitamins. Um, yes. Is this your first solo record? Yes, it is, actually. Now, you put this project out under the pseudonym Miss Miniver Rose. Do you connect or identify with the 1940s novel or movie of that name? Um, it's actually kind of a, a nod to my grandfather who passed, and his car he, he named Miss, Mrs. Miniver. After the movie? After the movie, and he was a. Uh, he fought in all the wars and all that kind of thing, so he was um, he was really close to me, and it's kind of my nod to him, and Rose is here, my middle, middle name. name right. um, is the material on the new EP newly written, or songs you've written over the years that got set aside? Um, they were, yeah, they were songs that I've been working on, kind of, aside from the band, um, that I just never really did anything with and decided I should just lay them out and see what happens with them, let them evolve. Well, you recorded the entire album on an iPad, is that correct? Yes. Uh, was this planned, or was it more of a matter of using the technology that you had available to you at the time? Um, when I bought the iPad, I, I kind of knew that that was one of the reasons why I was getting it, just because I, um, I am really kind of dumb when it comes to recording, and I wanted to start very basic. And, you know, it was very simple. It was like eight tracks, and I kind of learned a lot from doing that project, and working my way up. But yeah, it was, it was something I kind of planned for. Did you use the uh, uh, was it Garage Band? Yeah, it was just Garage Band for iPad, the first, the very first iPad. Well, compared to uh, recording and producing Vitamins albums, what sort of unique challenges did that recording environment present? Well, after I recorded it, I worked with Eric Loomis, um, who helped me kind of master it and uh, mix it, and we kind of just realized the limitations. First of all, you only have eight tracks, you know, which was eight instruments, that's it. And then it was kind of like, there's pops and sounds and different just things that like, the quality was a lot lower um, than working with, you know, bigger, better software. Now, did you use just like the mic on the, the iPad um, or did you have some external mic? I, I had a USB mic that I bought that I used like an adapter. But I didn't do that on all the songs. And some of the instruments, like the synth, I used inside GarageBand. Okay. And, you know, like touch-based instruments. Like virtual iPad. instruments. Yeah. Now the last track on the album, Insomniatic Mind Rambling, uh, it has some children's voices on it. Are these nieces and nephews or rela or related to you in any way? Um, they're actually, I teach uh, music at a Montessori school. And so I would just record them, tell stories, and some of the xylophones and stuff on there, uh, on that album were played by the kids there at the school. I let them in on, they thought it was really cool that they were going to be on Miss Lizzie's I bet, I bet. <laughs> so yeah, it was this little project I did with them. Now do you have to pay them union scale? Or? Uh, they don't know, no, I'd ask permission An extra their parents. cookie and snack time. <laughs> yeah, right? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Now, I can safely say that you're the first trained opera singer that I've had the pleasure of interviewing. Um, how long did you study? Um, for about five years in Greeley, UNC. That's where I met my band. Your opera training recently led to a unique opportunity to perform with the Flaming Lips, correct? Right. Um, tell us more about how that came about. Um, well, it kind of just... He initially, uh, Wayne Coyne, asked me to, my band, to open up for him in Aspen. So we did that and uh, kind of stayed in touch. And then one, one day I had the nerve to text him, like, hey, if you ever need a female vocalist, I sang opera in college. I tried to use that as my pitch. Never really thinking that would ever work. But a month later he said, can you sing? Great gig in the sky by Pink Floyd. Next thing I know, I'm doing 
doing it with them, you know? Well, that's kind of a classic, daunting song to sing. Oh, yeah. It was it, like had you ever done it before? No. no. And it was very quickly. It was like, can you sing Drake in the Sky this Friday at, in Atlantic City? You know? Wow. So flying you out, like, bring your gold bodysuit. <laughs> Pretty cool experience. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. One you'd never forget, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. Will you be performing any of the Miss Miniver Rose material live, or is it strictly a recording project? Actually, this, uh, this summer I'm going on tour with that material up to Seattle with one of my good friends, Shenandoah Davis. And she's booked uh, a bunch of shows for me um, up there, festivals and such. But yeah, our plan is I'm going to be doing that Miss Miniver Rose set at the UMS. And then, um, yeah, I was just going to take it from there and go on up the coast. And, uh, just you solo? Or just what? me solo, yeah. Just I, I've never really performed it solo, just a handful of times. So it's going to be a real big challenge for me because I'm used to having multiple people with me. Sure. I feel like I'm naked on stage. Yeah. I feel a little lonely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it's an amazing uh, EP, and I'm sure that it'll be great live, and, and we look forward to catching that at the UMS. All right. Thanks for taking the time to sit down with us and yeah. uh, do the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>